Hello, I'm Dr. Lindsay Schwartz, Associate Vice President of Workforce and Quality Improvement with the National Center for Assisted Living and American Healthcare Association, AHCA NCAL. I am also the current board chair for SEAL, the Center for Excellence in Assisted Living. Thank you to the National Governors Association, Dr. Maxey and her team at the Bowen Center for Health Workforce Research and Policy for the opportunity to talk about workforce challenges and issues today. Over 20 years ago, I started my career in long-term care, working direct care. I am passionate about our workforce and identifying solutions to address workforce challenges. Our organization, the American Healthcare Association and National Center for Assisted Living, ACA NCAL, represents more than 14,500 nonprofit and proprietary skilled nursing facilities, assisted living communities, subacute centers, and homes for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. By delivering solutions for quality care, ACA NCAL aims to improve the lives of the millions of frail, elderly, and individuals with disabilities who receive long-term or post-acute care in our member facilities each day. We have state affiliates that in each state that work closely with local government, and we have met with NGA previously to talk about workforce issues, and we always appreciate the opportunity. Our mission is to provide solutions for quality care. We know that workforce impacts quality of care, and that's why it's so important. Our workforce challenges are multifaceted, and thus we'll take different approaches for solutions. Prior to the pandemic, our long-term care was already facing workforce shortages across the United States. COVID-19 has accelerated this shortage into a crisis. Our long-term care workforce are the heart of long-term care. They have been the heroes throughout this pandemic, and without our incredible workforce, we would cease to exist, which would mean millions of patients and residents would not receive the care they so need. Prior to the pandemic, we focused a lot of our work on developing resources and education for our members and for the workforce. We've partnered with PHI for education and other organizations like SAGE. We've advocated for policies that can help address workforce issues, such as tax credits, immigration, loan forgiveness, and addressing the CNA training revocation. During the pandemic, we again still focused on resources. That's one of <clears throat> our main goals to take sometimes resources that maybe are too big that we receive and try to get them to a manageable amount so the workforce can easily read, understand, and implement. <clears throat> we also developed a temporary nurse aid and temporary feeding aid online free training that many states recognized, and so far hundreds of thousands have taken the courses and are employed. We've also developed a grief and trauma course, as we know COVID-19 has caused incredible grief and trauma to not only our residents, but also our workforce. We've advocated for funding to help address workforce issues. We've worked with the administration on strike force teams and other solutions to help address workforce shortages. We've also helped to get PPE and testing kits to our members to keep our workforce safe. Our members did amazing things for staff during COVID-19 and prior. Employers would pay hero pay, additional pay for working during the pandemic. Some brought in or partnered with food banks or grocery stores to bring in food or have food delivered so that staff didn't have to worry about going to the grocery store to shop during the pandemic, and especially when there were shortages at the grocery store. Some provided spaces for childcare. Others wanted to, but could not because regulations in their state didn't allow for this. The lengths that many providers went to to procure PPE or substitutes to keep staff safe, keep sa staff safe were incredible. Members have been identifying workforce issues and their top three concerns. Lately, it's been the number one. There are so many opportunities when we look at workforce and solutions. Part of it is changing how we think about aging in this country. It's definitely a shift in how our country and culture thinks about aging. Things like getting kids to understand and appreciate working with older adults is so important. Programs, and some of our <clears throat> providers have these, like intergenerational ones that have preschools. We've seen in assisted living and they're amazing. Utilizing tools like Advancing States has developed, connect to care jobs, where it's more than just a job board. There's an algorithm to connect staff 
and the job openings. Also assistance programs, and actually some of our providers already do things like this, providing affordable housing, childcare, transportation, and other solutions that are bare, that are barriers sometimes to employment. Programs like the Health Professionals Opportunity Grants, or HPOG, are good examples for targeting kids aging out of foster care. In our state, kids aging out of foster care receive money and also wraparound services to ensure their employment is stable and also that they have good opportunities with employment, addressing barriers they may have to successful employment. We also need to recognize that these jobs in long-term care are important, whether it's direct care, dietary, maintenance and housekeeping, and all of the leadership positions in nursing. Language is incredibly important to all of us. As researchers, our policymakers, providers, press, we need to stop using the term unskilled. If you work in long term care, you know caring for individuals require incredible skill. Just because someone doesn't have a degree, advanced degree, or go to college or have letters after their name doesn't make the work that they do unskilled. We also need to address things like wages and benefits. But this also requires additional funding too, and I know others will be talking about this. Flexibility is so important. We know that a majority of our workforce is female, and we still know that unfortunately, childcare duties and also caring for older adults tends to fall on our female workforce. So we have members who've actually had flexible schedules to allow for parents to be home when their kids get on the bus and be home when their kids get off the bus. We also need to address diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. Leadership in our long-term care does not mirror the direct care workforce. And I know we have been doing a lot of training with our members and leadership and our staff in hopes to disseminate this training on DEI issues and also elevate those working in long-term care to leadership positions if they so choose. Challenges include Without staff, SNFs, skilled nursing facilities, NALs would close, which would cause issues in not just all areas, but especially rural areas where there may not be a facility or a community close by, maybe hundreds of miles away from the individual's family. It can also mean limited access to assisted living for low income individuals. We've heard providers talking about how they may have to close one building in order to staff others. We also, as an opportunity, but also a challenge, we are great at training at clinical skills and how to physically care for a person and do their activities of daily living or instrumental activities of daily living, but we forget the training on soft skills. And you need to have soft skills when you're working with individuals. Training on things like communication is vitally important. One of our providers gave an example just recently that sticks with me and I think is really paramount to our discussion. And we've all probably experienced, I know I have in my small town, as she went to Starbucks to get her daily fix of coffee, she noticed a sign that said they'd be closing early due to staffing issues. She explained how long-term provider care providers can't do that. We care for people. We just can't shut our doors and say we don't have enough staff. It would mean that individuals wouldn't get the care they need. Addressing these challenges and using these opportunities to provide solutions to these challenges could improve the lives, not just for our residents, but our frontline caregivers. Again, thank you for the opportunity to talk about workforce challenges and opportunities, and I look forward to working together to find solutions.